Go. All right, this is a lesson. Uh, this is for the quiz lesson 24, 25, and 26. The first four questions are gonna be on the same exact topic, which is doing double Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, you're gonna have a rectangular prism, and I'm gonna ask you to find this diagonal from here to this diagonal, which is the longest line in the entire box. Okay, so let's make up some numbers here. I'm gonna get five, four, and five. All right, so this is what we're doing. First thing we have to do to figure out this diagonal length here from here <coughs> to here, what we need is this diagonal length, the bottom from here to here. Once we have that, I'll be able to make this triangle and use Pythagorean's theorem to solve it. So we'll be using Pythagorean's theorem two times, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so first Pythagorean's theorem we're gonna do is this bottom one, which I'll mark in blue. This right triangle right here. So the hypotenuse is our mystery. So it's just gonna be a squared, which is five, plus b squared, which is four, equals c squared, which is x. This is gonna be 25, this is gonna be 16, and this is going to be x squared. You add these together, you're gonna get 41 equals x squared, and then you're going to square root, square root. So I know the length of this is the square root of 41. So now I know that this is the square root of 41. All right, so now I'm gonna do this one that we were originally talking about, which was this triangle here. Now that I know two lengths, I can figure out the third length. So it's gonna be this bottom, square root of 41, is going to be squared, that's a squared plus b squared, five squared, equals c squared, which is x squared. Now, when you square a square root, I don't know if you can see this, when you square a square root, they're gonna be the opposites of each other. So they literally just cancel each other out. So you don't even have to do any math, the answer is 41 for this part. Five squared is 25 and this equals x squared. Add these two together, you're gonna to get 66 equals x squared. How do you solve the end of a Pythagorean's theorem problem? You square root, so the square root of 66 equals x. And that's your answer. And that's how you do these. There's just gonna be four of these. There's just gonna be, the, the shape is gonna look different, but the math is going to be exactly the same. So if you, met, if you know these steps, the first four questions should be very, very easy. Uh, the next four questions are on the distance formula, which I will give you so you do not have to memorize it. The distance formula is the square root of x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. Now, there's usually a two and a one here and a two and a one. Those numbers are not telling you to square anything or an exponent of any kind. All it's telling you is that you need two different, two different points to use this formula. That's all I'm saying, two different points to use this formula. So in this equation, we're gonna use uh, two, negative three, and negative five, and negative four, okay? So we're gonna subtract the x's, which are these two numbers. These two numbers are the x's, so we're gonna subtract them. We're gonna write two minus negative five. Now two minus negative five turns into 2 plus 5, which gives us 7. Don't forget that we still have to square it, which gives us 49. What we have completed is this part of the equation. Now we're going to complete the other side of the equation, okay, which is y minus y squared. So these are the y's. So negative 3, negative 3 minus negative 4, we should know already that it turns into a plus. Is it always going to turn into a plus? No just because this one has a minus sign and you're writing a double negative is why it's turning into a plus, okay? So these, when you add them, you're gonna get positive one, positive one squared, that'll give you one, okay? You add these together and you get 50, and the answer to this problem is the square root of 50. Now, if you don't have a calculator, you can leave it just like that and I will be fine, okay? Because the next step is press a button and I think you can do that, so I don't have an issue. So this is the next four questions. The next four questions are this repeated four different times, just different numbers, okay? So as long as you know how to subtract, you know how to square, and you know how to make this little symbol at the end, this should not be a problem. 
This is a right answer and this is a wrong answer. Make sure that you know that at the end you do this. Now if you square root it and you get 7.1, okay, that's understandable. You don't need a square root on that. But this does need a square root, okay? Um, next one that we're gonna do is question nine and question 10. Question nine, question 10 are on the cylinder. This is the formula for a cylinder, pi r squared times height. That's it. So all you have to do is put these numbers in the equation. I give you the equation on the test, so you do not have to memorize it. You just have to know what to put inside of this equation. Now, uh, I'll draw a cylinder really quick. And the radius I'm gonna give you is five, and the height is 12. Okay, so feet, feet, now, you have to figure out which one of these two numbers is the radius to put in R. This is the radius, five, is half of the distance from the center of the circle, from the, the, the distance from the center of the circle to the wall of the circle, which is five feet in this area. So, pi times five squared, and now we gotta figure out the height, which is 12, okay? So now we do five squared first, because you have to do that first, and we're gonna be left with pi times 25 times 12. And then you multiply 25 times 12, and you're gonna get 250 plus 50, so that's gonna be 300. So now you have pi times 300. Now, just for right now, just because I don't wanna sit here and use a whole video of me multiplying two numbers together, I'm gonna leave it as 300 pi. This is in terms of pi. Now, if you wanted to answer it completely, you would multiply 300 by 3.14, and you'll get your answer, okay? This is what they mean when they say, I want it in, in terms of pi. So they mean do all the multiplying in, except for the pi, okay? And this is your, this would give you your answer if you were including pi and you wanted the exact answer. So that's number nine and number 10. For number 11, let's do an example like this. I'm gonna do an upside down cone in this scenario. And I'm gonna give you the full length of the bottom which is going to be six feet. And the other one, the height is going to be four feet. Now, did I erase that or slide it? I slid it. Now this should be, when you're done, feet cubed. We're talking about volume, which is in three dimensions, so it should be feet cubed. I forgot that and I'm happy I went back. All right, so this next one is going to be uh, question 10, uh, question 11 on the quiz, is this one. Question nine and 10 is cylinders. Question 11 is this. So this formula, which I'm giving you, and you do not have to memorize, is pi uh, times r squared times height and then multiplied by one third, which is the same thing as dividing something by three at the end. So keep that in mind. So now we just put things where they go. Now, immediately you wanna put six into r, but six is not r. Six is the full length, okay? And we talked about radius is the center to the wall. So the radius for this question is actually six. I mean three. The diameter is six, the radius is three. Sorry, it's okay. So one third pi times three squared times the height, which is four. All right? So this is gonna be one third times pi. Three times three is nine. Then we're gonna multiply nine times four. That's one third times pi times nine times four, which is 36, okay? Then I'm gonna divide by three immediately because I'm gonna leave it in terms of pi. So I'm gonna ignore the pi and just leave it next to it. So divide by three and I'm gonna get 12 pi as my answer. Now, if I wanna leave it like that, I can, but if I wanna complete it, it'll be 12 times 3.14 and I'll get my exact answer, okay? So far so good, this has been pretty simple. Next one is going to be the last one. Question 12 is on a sphere. Now the equation looks slightly different. It's four over three pi r cubed. I mean, cubed. And I'm gonna pick the number for the radius here. I'm gonna directly give you the radius. Let's make this um, two, okay? So, R is two, there's only one number there. Okay, and there's only one number they're asking for, so this will be pretty simple. Four over three pi two cubed. 
2 cubed is 2 cubed is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2, which in this scenario is going to give us 8. So 4 over 3 times pi times 8. Now, multiplying by 4 over 3 is the same thing as multiplying by 4 and then dividing by 3, which is what we're going to do. 8 times 4 will give us 32. So pi equals uh, 32 divided by 3. And you can leave it like that. You can leave it as 32 over pi, 3 pi, and I'll be fine. If you want to simplify that, it'll be 10 and 2 thirds pi. And if you want the exact answer, you can multiply 10 and 2 thirds times 3.14, and you'll get your final answer. And that's the whole video. Peace.